Um, yeah, we're going to see. I mean, this guy, this question has been asked for us for a long, the whole season, pretty much about uh, how to accommodate. I know Sasha's still not here, but um, those sort of playmakers, and we felt that, uh, you know, Marnie, you know, is an incumbent Springbok who played very well against uh, the, the Pumas, so he had to play. I don't think it's the right message to put him on the bench. Damien man of the match last week. Uh, Warwick was playing good rugby. Uh, Ruan started his career with us as a wing. Uh, so that was pretty much the thinking. And there's a, there's a tactical element to Ruan being on the wing. Uh, there's some tactical elements around the centre pairing as well, which is probably not worth going into now. But yeah, very happy to be able to include all three. Uh, you know, we're lucky we can go 6-2 because Suleiman can cover 13 uh, wing. Ruan can move in, Dan can move in. Damien can move back, Damien can move in. So it's a nice back line, uh, but I think to have all three of those sort of real playmakers and our captain on the field and Ruin in a position he's comfortable with. We also know that uh, Glasgow kicked quite so sort of dynamic, box, uh, contestable kicks, and Ruin's one of the best players in the, in the team in the air. So uh, pretty happy with the back line we've chosen. And then, uh, and then was just, yeah, okay. no, just, I was just mighty in front. Um, what do they mean to this team? Because I mean, they're two spin but World Cup winners. We've got a lot of, a fair amount of injured Springboks, but my, uh, France is beyond, uh, is beyond compare, lots of ways. Uh, he's unique, uh, uh, that, that's big. And I'd say Marnie is, you know, he, you know, I get frustrated a bit with the criticism of Marnie uh, out there, but in this franchise, he's proven his worth uh, time and time again, world-class fluff. Uh, and so, yeah, it's great. It's a nice boost for us. I think the, the team did well last week, I think, Dan and the backs did very well last week, but I say if you get a world cost foul, you've got to make a plan. Yeah, just a couple. Glasgow defending champions, just a challenge playing them. Uh, Franco Smith's obviously won it with him. They've, they've had a very good record, you know, travelling around the world over the seas as well. Um, just a challenge playing Glasgow defending champions. Yeah, it's nice to play them in South Africa. Uh, we haven't for the last three games played them in South Africa. I mean, Scott's two on a 4G and dark in the middle of winter. So it's going to be hell of a nice to play them at home. Uh, so that, that's nice. Look, they're a good team. Uh, I think last year we finished fifth on the log, and they finished fourth, and they did very well to go and beat the log leaders, Munster. I mean, that was extraordinary. Munster away and Bulls away. So credit to them for that. They're a good team. But we've had some tough games there at Scott's Tune, and just really looking forward to a chance of, to play them in South Africa against uh, in front of, you know, in front of our in in front of our crowd. But yeah, geez, they've done a great job. I think they've got 17 Scottish internationals in the in that squad that's coming up for the autumn internationals, and for us that's a fantastic challenge. You know, um, we actually talked about it this week. These are the games you want to play. Yeah, just a bit of actually, actually a bit of revenge because um, you guys in the quarterfinals got you know, the, 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 the Mario, the, the body the line played in the air there as well. And they caught a couple of penalties here in the scrums. Yeah, so mine's yellow, all that those type of things. Yeah, it was tough. Same like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough game. Um, what I enjoyed about Scott's tune, I don't think there's one game there where we you know, didn't compete very well. I know they've got a final score, looked like a blowout, but I mean, you know, 13-10, uh, a scrum, but you know, it was a critical one. And then they get in the corner, the more they were chasing after that. Um, but you know, it's not to begrudge what they achieved at the end of the, at the end, I say really a, a good team, but, you know, we didn't enjoy the last Scott's tunes experience, so we're really looking forward to playing them at home. Yeah, just last one for my side, Dan. Um... You guys have played five times instead of what you guys have built up a fortress. It's kind of like a second home, mm. five of the five tomorrow's yeah. six match. Just could you touch on that and also your leadership? Um, yeah. How, how do you enjoy the captaincy or has it been a challenge? Just be easy to just, just yeah. touch on that as well, thanks. Yeah, no, looking forward to be back at Stellenbosch. Uh, as you said, it's, we've got a good record here. Um, nice to have a bit of a, for once, have the early kickoff. Um, yeah. We've been having a, uh, <laughs> quite a lot of the seven o'clock and later than that. Um, so a nice drive ball, two teams that like to run the ball. Um, both teams that like quick ball, I think two teams that I think the quickest rug speed in the competition. Um, so I think it's, it'll be a, a good matchup. Um, I think we'll be you know naive to think that the the heat and, and the venue is going to win us the game. Um, there's a lot more to it, and as Dobbo said, they, they really are a quality side. Um, in terms of the captaincy, I've I've really been enjoying it up until now. Um, obviously, 
a lot of adapting in the beginning. It's a, it's a new role, new challenge, um, but getting more used to it, you know, balancing your own game and, and getting the captaincy right at the same time. And yeah, I think we had a few challenges in the beginning around, you know, getting messages through to the ref, um, which are more scrum and more related, which are, you know, further away from me. And uh, I think we figured that out nicely. Um, having Nietling and, and JD uh, take that role up front, where it's, you know, co close quarters with the referee. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, cool. um, First on Zoom is Nathan. Go for it, Nathan. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good day, uh, Dupi and uh, Dobbo. Dobbo, I uh, heard from the grapevine that you are on crutches. Do you want to talk about, briefly talk about it? Uh, why are you on crutches? No. All right. Ask about injuries on the players there, Nathan. <laughs> All right. I was just asking um, uh, if there was anything wrong. Anyway, um, what were your takeaways, uh, takeouts between the Sharks versus Glasgow game? Are there any possible areas you'll be looking to exploit? Yeah. We saw some, some stuff that would be of interest to us. Uh, that we've made some plans around, but that's not for the, uh, that's not for this forum, nor there's neither is my health. But the um, the uh, I think we learned a lot about you know that I mean their fight. Uh, we saw a lot about their attack shape. We saw their their contestable game. Uh, that, that's still the stuff. They uh, we saw a couple of opportunities. That, uh, uh, yeah, but Nate, I think uh, with, please, I, I don't mean this with respect. Our plans around that is not for this forum, but um, to answer your question, yes, we saw some interesting stuff there. They did a very good performance against what is you know, a virtual Springbok pack, a lot of Springbok packs as well, and they uh, came with it, they got a losing bonus, they scored four tries and got a losing bonus point in what were difficult conditions in Durban. We have got one or two plans from what we saw from then. Uh, we've also got a lot of learnings from, from our, you know, having been at Scott's Tune twice in six months uh, over that period. so. Yeah, there are a couple of plans that maybe we haven't presented to them before. Um, and yeah, and Nate, please respect what, I'm, what I mean by not giving you more detail around that, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, I apologize about that, Dobbo. No, 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 it's not a criticism, Nathan, please, not a criticism. Uh, it's, it's just that, you know, I could, I could, maybe tomorrow night I'll tell you exactly what our plan was that we worked on and we could say it worked or didn't work. But I just don't want to say it now, if that's okay, just the technical stuff. Yeah, sure, sure, Dom. My, my health is yeah. a complete mess because of my lifestyle, so I'll leave it up there. <laughs> we can have a beer afterwards. Uh, Dom, uh, yeah, so please, if it's, it's just purely out of respect for the team to not give information of what we're going to sure. try and do tomorrow, yeah. Sure, the last week, obviously, Dom, I spoke about the Springboks. Obviously, the Sharks had the Springboks, and last week I asked you, Roy, where is Marnie and France? And you said that, obviously, they'll be taking that, that uh, break. But now, this week, uh, you bring in Marnie and France. A bit of change in hearts, perhaps. Change it? Changing hearts, bringing them in after you said that they weren't going to be playing for next, for, they'll be resting. No, we, we did the three weeks. All right, cool. Uh, so, so the first week one, they played Bombella, we played Ospreys, so that was, that was when they played. Week, so the first week of the compulsory three week rest was, um, was Zebra. Week two was um, uh, Edinburgh. Week three, week three was Munster. So they finished their resting. We could have decided to extend their rest. Uh, just out of the goodness of our heart, but we filled the mandatory, and they, and they were keen to play because there's another piece. You Nathan, know, you know, we always want our guys to be rested and that sort of thing. But you know, France's next game is going to be on the overseas tour, so you know, he probably wants a game to get ready for that, having had three weeks off. So this is the big rest period. This is what they call colloquially beer and bry, where they're doing no rugby whatsoever. So I think to go from that straight into end of year tour, it's actually what they want to do is plan. But sorry, we we completed the three week. Maybe I didn't make it clear last week, but we completed the three. Last week was the end of the compulsory rest. Sure, thanks for the confirmation, Dobbo. Dobbo, onto that Carmo excursion. I know you, maybe you weren't, I didn't see any visuals of you, but another a beautiful initiative, initiative by the URC. Um, yeah. Uh, um, I think it's special that uh, the Stormers, yeah, it's Glasgow, often the visiting teams have these community initiatives. We've certainly done them in a couple of our times with Ospreys. Uh, I think the Stormers set a certain tone there by sending, you know, at least was it three or four Springboks out there. I haven't seen that happen elsewhere. So um, that's great because Herschel comes from Carmel. It, it resonates with that area. So I really think our players have gone above and beyond when I mean, they were meant to be off to go off and join Glasgow in that. So I think a special initiative by the URC and I think a really cool response by the Stormers. You know, a lot of players would have said they're often in off. Didn't have to do it. It's a large Glasgow initiative, but to support the URC like that, good initiative. And I say, uh, 
And also, you know, we want to, you know, our guys come from some amazing communities. You know, Herschel from Car uh, from Carmel, where's Zassi uh, from Villersdorf, uh, Salman, and uh, Abiyisi, yeah, from Paul. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, and that's important. So I think Kirsch with a sense of pride being in Carmel. So I'm very proud of them for doing it because they didn't have to. No? So it wasn't, we told them to go there. In fact, they had to do that voluntary makes it more powerful for me. Cool. Um, then finally, one question for me. Um, just obviously with the injury of, of Evan Ruiz, uh, it gives up KK Morab opportunity. I mean, taking, taking both uh, the, the opportunity with both hands. I mean, can you speak about KK Morab? How has he been thus far for the Stormers uh, this season? Yeah, it's been great. Um, I think last week was probably his best game. He hasn't made the line breaks that we saw in Start Francais or um, Northampton yet, and that's what his real X factor is. But his defensive work and his carrying has been really, really good. And we think Marabi Kick is a special player for the future. Um, his position, I think that's still a little debate. You know, is he he's such a good stealer? Could he be somebody that, that we could move to six? But um, we're a guy we're backing. He's a guy we're backing hard in this franchise. A really tough guy, a real warrior. Um, really like him very, 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 very much. And you can see how much game time we give him. I, don't, I mean, may have subbed him a couple of minutes of one game, but he's a that's right, Vinny. Uh, but uh, he, yeah, he's playing most of him. He's playing long and deep, and that's why we just we want, just want to bring him through. The, his X factor, um, and it's, is are those. You can just do tackle breaks, and I think how we whether we're creating enough opportunities for those. That's probably something we've got to look at in this break. Cool. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Mike. Nice one. All right, Stephen is next. Yes, Stephen. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Mikey. Um, Dan, um, this is a um, heck of a backline also. Um, I think that you will be up against, I think, uh, you know, centre pairing of Tupolotu and you, Jones. Um, just your thoughts on that challenge. Um, and, uh, you know, just personally, is it a chance for you also to make another statement? Yeah, I haven't seen their team yet. Um, I'm assuming that's a centre pairing, if you say so. Um, um, yeah, th we've come up against them a couple of times in the the last few seasons, and it's it's always always been a good challenge. Um, I think they have a really good shape, and and that favours you know the the attacking attacking play and and their backline. Um, but yeah, they 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 really they they difficult customers to to deal with. But but we've got our plans around that. Um, as Dabo was saying earlier, I think these are, you know, these we spoke about it in the week, and these are the games that you want to play against, you know, seasoned international players. Um, so it'll be a nice challenge, and uh, looking forward to that, Stephen. Um, Dabo, obviously, when one talks about guys that you think should be in a Springbok squad, it's always the question is worse, but in place of who? But it's been another Springbok squad without um, Dan, you know, which I, I guess, in a way, that. Russ is going with the experience, and 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 you can't blood, you know blooding new guys is a um, you know it's probably not the time. But are you still thinking that um, you know a game like this is a good opportunity for for Dan maybe to just serve a reminder uh, of his quality as well? Yeah, look, I thought uh, last season maybe similar to Ruben, probably one of the best in the country operating in his position. Uh, we'll desperately want him to get that, uh, but you know, given where our Springboks record is and you know the name we trust, but uh, um, I think another season like last or a run of games like he had last season, I think uh, yeah, I think I think it's, he's going to burst down the door. Um, but as I say, you know, the, the the Springbok is just it's a golden generation, created one, not just something that fell off trees and. Uh, I know they're very concerned about or very focused on the amount of caps, but I hopefully Dan does well enough to to to, to, to get it, yeah, to burst his way through that door. I think last season he must have come hell of a close. As I say, like Ruben, and I think another season like that would be very hard to ignore. Yeah, to our mind is is definitely at that uh, interna uh, yeah, international centre. And Dobbo, um obviously playing a team like this, I mean it's almost almost like you're playing a test team. Um, you, you yeah, know, just, I mean, um, 17, 17 internationals. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, yeah. A, it's 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 a test team. <laughs> yeah, there's no way about it. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I interrupted and, you, Stephen. Um, yeah, because um, you obviously by not playing in the DHL, you're losing a little bit of a you know that pressure cooker um, that you had, for example, against uh, Munster. I thought you know the crowd was quite a 
in a way, probably a part of that performance, you know, as the team became stronger. Um, but at the same time now, what you maybe have is you have the heat um, in your favour. Um, so, you know, is that losing that sort of pressure of the DHL stadium a, a bit of a concern? And then on the other side, do you think you could maybe get some reward by uh, playing tempo um, against the team from the Northern Hemisphere? Yeah, uh, I think uh, yeah, Mabin took points to our record here. I think uh, both, Steve, you know, the, the, it was hell of a nice last week. You know, to have 28, 29th or whatever it was in, uh, in that stadium, it was just a great experience. Great to be home because we hadn't been there for so long, don't forget, you know. Our last game was the Lions in May? First of June. First of June, first of June yeah. Uh, so not having been there for four and a half months was absolutely uh, brilliant. Uh, to get there in front of the crowd. So we missed that, you know, because I thought we could have built some nice impetus, you know, to have the 20, 23 champions and the 24 champions two weeks in a row at DHL State. Having said that, a lot of what you does resonate. We've played three games in a row at Glasgow in Scottstoon on a 4G in the dark, often in the rain and the wind and stuff like that. And this will be very different. We've got a great record here. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the guys grew up here, you know, playing here in various games. Uh, the crowd, the students will come. They might not be the same uh, uh, t t spectators that we, you know, the same people. But there certainly will be passionate storm of support in what will be a little bit of a cauldron. So yeah, I mean, I've been dying to play at Glasgow at home. Uh, so we've gone up to Scots two or three times. We fought really well there, and to us to play in Stellenbosch, uh, we enjoy it. Uh, I say it's nice to play. We are. We enjoy it. We enjoy the size of the field, the speed of the field. And we enjoy the the support we get here. Adobe, if um, you know, Damien kicked five out of five, I think, um, last week. I mean, would you continue with Damien as a, a goal kicker, even though Marnie traditionally has done that role for you? Yeah, look, we've had positive experience with Marnie. Um, and I think, you know, we, we would probably stick with Marnie. I mean, he's won us all sorts of games with his kicks. We had a tough one in Scottstoon, which was the one we lost. But then again, there was about a 40 knot thing coming over the top of the roof there. We saw one ball, uh, I don't think even crossed the, crossed the, crossed the, the dead ball line with a penalty attempt into the wind. So um, I think we'll probably go with Marnie. Uh, I want whatever, you know, not being funny, what Marnie feels backed and empowered. Um, I know he did it for the Springboks where he didn't kick. But uh, no, Marnie's, Marnie's good. I, look, I... I, I mean, it's because we love Gaza, but they weren't. They weren't. They weren't. They were. They were. They were kickable. Uh, but um, I think Marnie has proven his, his value with us over the years, so we'll probably we'll start that way. Yeah, Dan. Um, just obviously, I think I, I felt that quarter final you guys played better than it, than it showed. You know, in, yeah. in the scoreline, and, and perhaps could have gone either way. But is that game a motivation um, for um, for this game, or have you closed that chapter? Yeah, I think I think that. That feels a long way away, but I think we we were, you know, we did feel that we were kind of scarred by that for a while after that quarterfinal, or it hurt for a while after that. Um, but I think, as Dobbo said, um, all the results against against Glasgow, even though most of them haven't gotten our favour, I think we've we've never felt like we've been outplayed by them, if you know what I mean. Um, we've always always felt, you know, kind of. Um, that we're in the game, sort of thing, and and yeah, not outplayed by them. So I think, well, we've learned a lot of lessons from that quarterfinal, um, and yeah, we're we're looking forward to this weekend, Stephen. Thank you, uh, Dan and Dobbo. Good luck. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Last, we're going to end with Leeton. Does yes, Leeton. Thanks, Mikey. Hello, guys. Hope you're well. Um, Dobbo, just just on those changes. Um, I mean, the, the backline really clicked in in that last um say 40 minutes um against monster um but but do you feel mani brings that something special and and there's enough creativity at the back that you can continue with that momentum i think you probably wouldn't have done these changes if um and the positional switch um if if it wasn't someone like mani coming back 100 percent. we will say exactly the same if mani had been here i was very happy with him last week i do think Let's, there are some. We've got some plans around it. You know, it's, what ruins the wing and Dan's at thirteen. But um, uh, you know, these those three guys are really special for you know they they game makers or 
or what do you call playmakers? And so at every breakdown, if we on attack two of them are on one side, uh, there will never be all three on one side, well, unlikely unless it's a really wide breakdown, uh, two and one, and that's that's going to put any defence under pressure. You know, whether it's through their kick space, their attacking kick, their vision, their communication, two of them will always be in backfield if the opposition have got the ball, which is, allows us to help us get into our transition play. All three of them are really good under the high ball, and we've got the wings are all good under the high balls, I see in Ruan. So I think it gives us a, it's going to make it more challenging for the Glasgow defence than maybe just the two. So, you know, to accommodate Marnie was a no brainer. I mean, well, I, I'll be honest with you, when I started the week, I thought, okay, we had a really good backline went last week. I did my sketch of what I thought the team would be on Sunday night. Uh, I'd put Marnie down on the bench because he hasn't been here for a while, he hasn't played with us since Glasgow. And then I went to sleep that night and I thought, you, you, should, be commit, you should be in Falkenberg. It's, uh, uh, how do you do that? You know, and I spoke to other coaches and I agreed. The sort of sentence means so hanging. Uh, so, um, no, no, I think, I think it, it, and, and it really is exciting. I think we could have stumbled upon something. We've still got Sasha, uh, Sasha as well. So, look, we won't get all four on the field. Uh, but this three, it's going to be a new way of playing for us, a new way of attacking. Uh, and let's see what it looks like. But I'm pretty excited by it. You know, I think we'd all agree when we saw it in Bombela with from Marnie it was pretty special. So, yeah, it was a thing. Yeah, and he, and he loves playing Scottish um, sides. So, so that's another thing. <laughs> eh? um, <laughs> just, just a, just a little tongue in cheek um, as, um, as Brocky um, raced with the emphasis on race. Um, uh, uh, France and and Finas for the for the scrums. Yeah, listen, uh, that's a, it's a, actually it's not tiny. It's a good question. Listen, I think there was a misunderstanding around Andrew Brace and that last thing, uh, which wasn't his fault or our fault. Um, but uh, you know, I thought you know, we we had some queries around the scrums, as you know, which we sorted out, and we we will and Brocky and Brocky's both are. He's a sort of soft scrum, scrum coach, and he'll be the guy in the, with Nettling and, you know, not playing. He'll be the guy interacting with the referee. But I'll, I must make it absolutely clear about Andrew Brace. That's a test-level, world-class referee. Um, we felt at Ospreys that uh, uh, that game, we, we had some queries around the scrum before, which maybe we didn't get across to Andrew well enough. Our, we, as Dan said, we've learned a bit more about the management. You know, having a centre... Uh, running up to a referee to go about a scrum, I think, you know, it looks poor in that, I think there are two elements to it. It looks offensive, I don't mean offensive like in a rude way, it just is Dan's running towards him. And I think the second issue is um, that with all respect to Dan, I'm not sure he's, 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 the, he's, the, he's, uh, he's, he's Don scrum human, is. yeah, he's a scrum <laughs> human. So, um, yeah, we probably didn't handle that as well as we could have, and certainly not after the game. So, but in terms of, we thought that Andrew Bray's performance, other than our queries, which were genuinely queries around the scrum, was absolutely excellent. So, we thought to have Bray as a referee. I, I, he's, he's, he's one of the world's best referees, so no issues around that whatsoever. And then having Brock there is also our coach and on the field, I think we will, and close to the action. So, Dan doesn't have to be worried about that. It'll be, it'll be a good experience. Yeah. Thank you, guys.